Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Many of you have noticed there's been an increase in earthquakes and volcanic activity around the world. Mainstream media isn't telling you, but this is all attributed to the grand solar minimum we are now entering, solar cycle 25. NASA has said they expect the solar minimum to continue for maybe 30 to 50 years. We're not going to see an increase um, back to what was considered normal for sunspots for that long. Yeah, 20 to 30 years. Other effects is going to be stronger storms, less UV light, and we do need the ultraviolet light. Um, we know that the lack of ultraviolet light um, causes depression. Sunspots are enormous producers of ultraviolet light. UV light is a great sanitizer. Less sunspots equals less UV light, therefore less sanitation and more germs and viruses. The greater the chance that they will mutate. Less sunspots occur during a period of weakened solar magnetic field and also reduced solar winds, which is what pushes cosmic radiation away from Earth. Therefore, during solar minimum, more cosmic radiation. Cosmic radiation has a great influence on cloud formation. It creates free radicals that act as a condensation nuclei. Therefore, more clouds during solar minimum. More flooding, more storms, more tornadoes. Therefore, less ultraviolet radiation penetrating to the surface of the Earth. I would say that our current grand solar minimum is having an effect on diseases here on Earth. They are suggesting that this grand solar minimum, 2020, will last through 2070, resulting in diminished magnetism, infrequent sunspot production, and less ultraviolet light that will be reaching the Earth and bringing a colder period to the planet that may span 50 years. The last grand minimum event, a disruption of the sun's 11-year cycle, variable sunspot activity happened in mid-17th century, known as the Maunder Minimum. It occurred between 1645 and 1715 during a longer span of time when parts of the world became so cold that the period was called the Little Ice Age, which lasted from around 1300 to 1850. Wikipedia says it lasted from 1645 to 1715, and they figured that the lower temperatures in, in Europe were caused by also volcanic activity that happened during that same time. We had mass migration from Ireland because of the potato famine, a blight that grew that affected the potato crops. People starved in China and different parts of the world. There was another period called the Dalton Minimum. That was from about 1790 to 1830. Uh, in Germany, the temperature dropped by an average of 1 degrees. That would be one degree Celsius. Recent papers have suggested that a rise in volcanism, volcanic eruption, was largely responsible for the cooling trend. I'll give you links to all the papers, but there is also another paper that suggests that solar activity plays a role in volcanic activity on our planet. In fact, in times of low solar activity, such as the current solar minimum, volcanic activity tends to rise. One publication connects the Tambora volcanic eruption in Indonesia during April of 1815 to the unusually long period of low solar activity known as the Dalton Minimum. The following year of 1816 was unusually cold throughout much of the world, and is now referred to as the year without a summer. When was the last time anyone saw snow in May? We got snow here in South Dakota in May. Another study suggests that the increase in cosmic rays during times of low solar activity actually causes the increase in volcanic activity. 
NASA forecast for the next solar cycle, the one we're entering now, 25, reveals it will be the weakest of the last 200 years. And was it just a coincidence that the 1811-1812 New Madrid series of earthquakes were the largest in magnitude, estimated to be a magnitude 8.0 or greater, in the continental North American history? The quakes occurred in the midst of the Dalton Solar Minimum. I did a report how it looks like Mauna Loa is gearing up for another eruption. Hopefully it doesn't because people are still recovering from the eruption of Kilauea. There's been unusual events reported in the night sky. We got sprites that were photographed in Texas. Yeah, and we've got an increase in storms, adverse weather, plagues of locusts, not to mention this recent pandemic of the coronavirus that has been reported to be mutating. Children affected by the Kawasaki disease, they don't know if it's related to the coronavirus or if it's something new. Kawasaki disease is not new, but it used to be quite rare, and there's been many reports of children coming down with it. Besides these earthquakes occurring here in the United States, I've talked about the uh, earthquakes that they've been having in the Mediterranean Sea. And in Asia, with the Ring of Fire and the movement of the plates with um, Australia and the volcanic activity that's been occurring there. There was a 6.6 .6 today um, by the Solomon Islands. That 6.5 yesterday in Nevada, that was May 15th. Nevada's had hundreds of aftershocks. Uh, looks like that one was the largest so far this week. Yeah. You can see all these earthquakes listed here. These are all the 4.5s they had or greater. And they got 74 in the last week. 4.5 or greater. So, what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you for subscribing. Please stay safe. Thank you for your support. And I'll talk to you later. God bless y'all. Bye.